In this video, we want to review some basic concepts for rigid floating structures. They're also applicable for floating structures, for, for uh, flexible structures. So, let's get started. We're going to talk about buoyancy and stability, coordinate systems. So we use several different coordinate systems in hydroelasticity. Uh, rigid body motion hydrostatic stiffness, the mass matrix. So this is a photograph on the left-hand side here of that uh, MOBE module that we talked about in the previous video. And on the right-hand side is a cross-section of that, basically a free body diagram, where we introduce some symbols that are common in, in, uh, in uh, naval architecture. B is the buoyancy. It's just uh, the weight of the displaced water. Uh, G, gravity. Rho sub W is the density of uh, mass density of fluid. And del is the uh, uh, displaced volume. It's a traditional symbol used for the displaced volume. So the buoyancy, of course, uh, is just the water density time, weight density times the displaced volume. G is the uh, uh, center of mass, uh, Cg, and uh, W is the structural weight. Kb is the distance from the keel to the uh, center of buoyancy B, and Kg is the vertical distance from the keel to the uh, center of uh, gravity, center of mass. Kb is for all practical purposes, less than kg. Uh, it's just because the mass is typically more oriented above the water, and the water, and the buoyancy, of course, is down inside in the water. Okay, so if we look at uh, this free body diagram here, and we're assuming the structure is freely floating. Uh, we know that from just from uh, some of the forces in the x direction, we w has to be equal to b. The weight has to equal to the buoyancy. Uh, this is again, I'm assuming it's you know, we're in a static equilibrium configuration for a freely floating structure. B is the hydrostatic pressure integrated over the wet wetted surface. Uh, the horizontal components of that must cancel, of course. Otherwise, you would get motion in the uh, X or Y uh, direction. Similarly, G and B must be on the same vertical line for moment equilibrium. If they weren't, then the structure would have to rotate until they did line up. So if we look at coordinate systems, so on the left is the finite element model of that MOBE module. And we'll talk about that in a subsequent video. And on the right is, the, is just a cross-section. So we have an inertial coordinate system that's uh, denoted by x1, x2, x3, or x, y, z. Just preference whether you want to use the subscript numerals or the different letters. And that origin we place at the still water level, and we have z uh, or x3 going up uh, as posit in the positive direction. The body fixed coordinate system we can locate uh, anywhere we want. Typically it's kind of convenient to put it on this at, at the CG as I indicated here in this schematic. Uh, we can use XB1, XB2, XB3 or XB, YB, ZB depending on your preference. And again it's uh, oftentimes convenient to put it at the CG but it doesn't have to be at the CG. Uh, it often has the same orientation as the initial coordinate system uh, when we're talking about a single body anyway. Uh, if we have uh, multiple bodies, then each body is going to have their own body fixed coordinate system, but there's only going to be one inertial coordinate system. So in that case, uh, it's not likely that uh, both bodies are going to have coordinate systems, body fixed coordinate systems that are uh, uh, and have to have the same orientation as the inertial coordinate system. So let's talk about rigid body motions. So we'll specify these motions in, a, in the body fixed coordinate system. 
So there's, we know that there's going to be six degrees of freedom for a rigid body. Uh, that means there are six independent rigid body modes of motion. Now we choose the following, and, and I emphasize the word choose because we can choose any six independent rigid body modes of motion we want. Uh, we choose the following for convenience. We're going to choose surge as a unit displacement along uh, XB, sway as a unit displacement along YB, heave as the unit displacement along ZB, roll as the unit rotation around ZB, XB, pitch is the unit rotation around YB, and roll, yaw is the unit rotation around uh, ZB. Now, I say unit here because we're defining the mode of motion, not the actual surge displacement of the, of the body. Uh, we need to calculate what that magnitude is uh, based on uh, these modes. So once we have uh, the magnitude of these modes, of these six modes, uh, then we can calculate the displacement of any point on the body. So let's talk about the hydrostatic stiffness for a rigid floating body. Uh, it's also known as the hydrostatic restoring forces. It's the, probably the more common in naval architecture to use that terminology. Uh, but for, for uh, hydroelasticity, I find it convenient to talk about the hydrostatic stiffness. Uh, and I denote that case of F, capital case of F. K because that's the traditional uh, symbol we use for stiffness for in structural analysis. The subscript F just means for the fluid as compared to case of S, which would be the structure, the stiffness of the structure. So it's there's six degrees of, of freedom, so that's the case of F is a six by six matrix. Now, if we impose a surge unit displacement and release the structure, um, we, we know there's no force required to displace it in that direction, and therefore there's no force uh, that's going to restore it to its original position. And likewise, there's no, no force that's going to tend to keep it moving. So uh, that means that we have a neutrally stable system in surge mode, right? This, the stiffness is zero, and um, it just stays where it is. So it's the definition of a neutrally stable system. If we displace it, it stays there. That's the definition of a neutrally stable system. A positively stable system, or a stable system, uh, is one that moves, comes back to its initial configuration, and an unstable system is one that continues to uh, displace. So uh, we also notice that it has zero stiffness. So these two uh, phrases, zero stiffness and neutrally stable, are, are the same thing. They mean the same thing. We have the same situation in sway. And uh, we have the same situation in yaw, which in that case involves uh, a rotation, but it doesn't require any moment to cause that rotation. And there's no uh, forced moment that tries to bring it back to its original configuration. Now the next three uh, are more interesting. If we impose a heave, unit heave displacement and release the structure, we know that we the unit heave would be positive, we'd be pulling up on the structure, right? We'd be lifting it up. So a positive uh, displacement because of the way we defined our Z coordinate system. So the decrease in displaced volume is equal to the water plane area. The water plane area is the area of the structure that's cut by the still water plane. Uh, and so uh, and because the displacement is one, then the, that displaced volume is just the water plane area times one. Uh, the buoyancy is decreased, so uh, we no longer have force equilibrium because the gra gravity, the, the, the weight of the structure is the same. And so we've had to uh, apply a force to impose that displacement. And if we let go, it's, the structure is going to want to sink back down to its initial configuration so that it has, so that it has a static equilibrium. So that means we have a, a stable system. We have a positive stiffness because we required a positive force to uh, 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 impose the displacement. And uh, looking forward, uh, that means we have a positive natural frequency, by the way.
So the heave stiffness is the water plane area times the water weight density. The units of that are going to be force per unit displacement, clearly, because we're talking about a force and we're talking about a unit translational displacement. So now if we look at uh, the roll motion, that involves rotation about the x-axis, and I've indicated that uh, schematically over there in the free body diagram. And what happens is now B gets shifted away from G. Uh, it's no longer, they're no long, it's no longer under the same, uh, ver on the same vertical line rather. And so there's a there's an unstable overturning moment. So if, if imagine summing moments about G, then B is going to try to that offset of B is going to try to continue to push this thing over. However, the right side of the structure has increased submergence, and the left side has decreased. That means the pressure on the right hand side is the hydrostatic pressure has increased, and the hydrostatic pressure on the left hand side has decreased. So that causes a writing moment. And the writing moment is equal to the second moment of the water plane area times the mass, the, sorry, the weight density of the fluid. So the co combined effect, the combination of these two, is the roll stiffness. And it must be positive for stability. That means that the writing moment has to be greater than the uh, overturning moment. The units are going to be moment per unit rotation. So we have the heave stiffness coefficient KF33, we have the roll stiffness coefficient KF44, and we have the pitch stiffness coefficient KF55. So depending on symmetry conditions, we can also have coupling terms. Note that the stiffness coefficients are the forces required to impose a unit displacement of each mode. Also note, in structural analysis, we often use forces to mean both forces and moments, and displacements to mean both uh, translational and rotational displacements. This convention is almost required for uh, non-rigid body analysis. It's very useful, very convenient, and it's a convention that we're going to continue to use in these lecture videos. I want to look a little bit more at the stiffness, the concept of stiffness. And stiffness is a linearization. So if we look at, uh, at capital F vector is the, in, the, in our case of the rigid body, we, is a six by one vector. So surge force, sway force, heave force, uh, uh, roll moment, pitch moment, yaw moment. And then on the right-hand side, that, it just indicates that these forces are functions of the displacement u. If we take the derivative of this, so f sub i is the ith term in that 6 by 1 vector. If we take the derivative of that, we, we see that it's df i duj times duj. And it's these partial derivatives that are the stiffness coefficients. So the derivatives are linearizations, right? It's the tangent to the curve, if you think back to your calculus. So hence, the hydrostatic stiffness is based on linear kinematics because it's a linearization. So for linear problems, the stiffness is constant. Um, of course, for nonlinear problems, it would not necessarily be constant. Typically, it's, it's not because of the large displacements. Uh, so far, we've looked at just um, a freely floating body, but we can have mooring lines, mooring stiffness, either through catenary mooring lines or in the case of a TLP through uh, tendons, uh, the TLP tendons. Uh, the stiffness from the mooring lines can be added to the hydrostatic stiffness if we want, or it can be used to form an additional uh, stiffness matrix, K sub M, if you will, for mooring. Um, and then that would be included in the total stiffness. I'd also like to point out that stiffness does not include any dynamic effects. It's strictly a static term. Considering dynamic effects, we're going to, we're going to be uh, looking at dynamics, right? That's where it's interesting. So uh, let's look at the mass matrix for a floating rigid body. 
Uh, just as the stiffness matrix uh, where the force is required to cause unit displacement, similarly the mass matrix of the force is required to cause a unit acceleration in each rigid body mode. So for example, MS11, MS22, MS33 is the total structural mass and, and um, they are typically the same. Uh, there are some cases where they may not all be the same. Uh, the, the case that comes to my mind immediately is if you have some entrained water that is not uh, required to move in every direction, every degree of freedom, uh, that, then uh, that mass may be included in some uh, motion, but not in others. And actually there's an example of that that we'll talk about um, later when we talk about uh, modeling. Uh, MS44, 5566 are the mass moments of inertia. We can have coupling terms. They may exist. It depends on symmetry and on whether or not we're using principal axes. In summary, uh, hydroelasticity of floating bodies involves the rigid body motion. Uh, it's very important before any hydroelastic analysis is carried out to confirm values determined by the program. We need to determine the location and magnitude of buoyancy and make sure it agrees with what we expect. So for example, we know that the buoyancy has to be underneath the, um, the uh, center of mass. And we know that the uh, magnitude of the buoyancy has to equal to the weight of the structure. If they're not, there's something wrong. Uh, we know that the rigid body mass should, in our model, in our mesh, should coincide with the mass that we know that the structure has. Uh, similarly, the hydrostatic stiffness for rigid body is fairly straight, is fairly straightforward calculation, uh, and we should make sure that our calculations in our model uh, give us the correct values. Uh, and if they're not, if something's not right, it means there's a problem with the mesh, and we need to fix that mesh before we continue. We cannot do anything, we cannot proceed forward until these things uh, uh, are the values that they should have, uh, because working with the wrong mesh is going to just give us uh, nonsense results. So it's a very, very critical check on the mesh, and I uh, can't emphasize this point enough. We have to check the mesh. And in the examples that I work through, uh, I show, I, I do these checks and I make, and I show you where they, they, they are and how you can do them in, in hydronics R. So our next topic is going to be, uh, start off with uh, some review of structural dynamics and uh, then we're going to look at uh, uh, structural modeling especially, uh, the, because it's so important for structural, for hydroelasticity. And then we're going to come back to uh, more advanced topics in structural dynamics.